welcome to Playdate with Art. I'm Diane. Today we're going to be making sensory shakers. And the reason we're doing that is because the theme of today's Playdate is super senses. Do you know what your senses are? We have five senses and they're how we know about everything that's happening all around us in the world. Oh, that's my cat Reggie. Don't mind him. He likes to walk around during Playdate. So our five senses are sight, which we use our eyes to look and see things. And then right under our eyes is our nose. Smelling, that's another sense. Do you smell anything where you are? Maybe I smell Reggie. And then under your nose is your mouth. And you use your mouth to taste. Taste is another one of our senses. Mmm, what kind of things do you like to taste? And then you can also use your ears to hear. Do you hear anything? My cats are being very quiet right now, so I don't hear anything, but sometimes I hear them meowing or purring. And then our last sense is touch. You can use your fingers or actually any part of your skin to touch and feel things. You can see the temperature with your fingers or your skin. You can feel the shape of something or how hard it is. And so our shakers that we're making today use all of our senses, almost. We're not gonna use taste because I probably don't wanna eat a bottle, but you can hear it. You can see it, look at all the colors. You can touch it. And there's also gonna be a part that you can smell and I'll tell you more about that later. But first we're gonna look at a few pieces of art from the Milwaukee Art Museum's collection and they're gonna help us practice using all of our different senses. Ready? Okay, let's take a look. This painting is by the artist Richard Aniskevich and it's called Saul II. The first thing I notice when I look at it is the bright colors. In the middle, there's a green square, and then all around it, I see pink, and I see red, and at the very edges, I see light blue and a little dark blue. The colors are so bright, it's almost like my eyes are vibrating as I look at it. It looks sort of like it's moving. When I look closer, I notice there's lots of squares in this painting. The green square is in the middle, and then there's a red square around it, a pink square around that, and it alternates between pink and red squares all the way until I get to those blue squares at the very edge. And then I also notice the green square in the middle is solid, but then there's lots and lots of little tiny skinny lines coming out from all around it, going out toward the edges of the painting. So the more I use my eyes to look at this painting, the more I notice, and it's really fun to look at. This painting is by a Haitian artist named Laurent Casimir, and it's called Crowded Market. When I look at it, I can see it's a really, really crowded market. There's so many people everywhere. They're up close together. Some people are carrying things. I see a few animals when I look really closely. And even though the actual painting doesn't make any sounds, I can use my imagination to think about what I might hear if I were in this scene. I can imagine I'd hear lots of people talking, maybe greeting each other, saying good morning. Some people are selling things. Maybe they're calling out to people passing by, talking about how fresh their produce is or what kinds of other things they're selling. Maybe some of the animals are making sounds. As people walk around, they make sounds. Their feet are shuffling on the ground and the dirt. And maybe they're saying, excuse me, as they're bumping into each other because it is really crowded. So this is one where I can use my ears to hear what I imagine would be sounds in the crowded market. This is a sculpture by Clyde Jones. It's untitled, but when I look at it, I imagine a little puppy or another kind of playful creature. The materials he used to make it are wood, nails, and cockle shells. Now we know we can't actually touch things that are in the museum, but we can use our imaginations and try to imagine what this object might feel like if we could touch it with our fingers. So I look at the nose of the little puppy or whatever creature it might be. I think it would be kind of rough. I can see the wood edges. It looked like maybe he chopped it or broke it apart, or maybe it's a piece of wood that fell apart. And so it's a little rough. There's a crack in the wood that reminds me of a mouth. Maybe I could touch the edge of that and it would kind of have a little bit of a sharper edge. Uh, when I look at the legs, 
Those look like skinnier branches with some bark still on them. I think that bark would be rough, but it might feel a little bit different from the wood on the head that doesn't have bark on it. That's just the inside part of the wood. And then when I look at the eyes, I see two shells. Have you ever touched a shell? Some parts are smooth and some parts have little ridges. You can see this shell has little bumps that kind of go up and down. If you feel the edge, it might feel like a zigzag and it'd be a little bit hard. And then in the middle of the eyes are the nails holding them together. I think those look like they'd be smooth. Maybe they're made of metal and I can feel the smooth rounded edge around the sides. So I can imagine all different kinds of textures that I can feel with my fingers if I could touch this object. This is a painting by Xenia Kamlakine. She was a Russian American artist and this is an untitled painting. When I look at it, I imagine I'm in a big field of flowers. Maybe it's summertime and all the flowers are in bloom. And if I pretend I'm really there and I, I take a deep breath, I can smell with my nose the sweet smell of all those beautiful flowers. Maybe I walk around, I can smell some different smells as I see different flowers in front of me. And when I look up in the sky, it looks like it might be a little bit gray. Maybe it's going to rain later today. Sometimes when you go outside, have you ever noticed there's kind of that smell in the air? It feels a little bit damp. It might be raining later. Maybe I smell that smell too. I'm gonna give another big sniff. Can you imagine what it might smell like if you were with all those flowers? This is a painting by a German artist named Emily Prayer, and it's called Fruit Piece. Now, I don't think she'd be happy if we really took a bite out of this painting, but if you look at it, you can imagine what kind of flavors you might be able to taste if you could eat some of the things in this painting. Right in the middle, I see really round, juicy looking grapes. I see green grapes and red grapes. I like green grapes. They're so sweet, and these ones look like they're super juicy and really tasty. And then right next to the grapes, I see some peaches. Ooh, peaches are one of my favorite fruits. They're also really sweet and juicy. I love to eat peaches in the summertime, outside in the sunshine. And then over on the other side, there's some pears. Do you see those red pears? Pears are another really tasty fruit. They're also sweet and juicy. They have a nice crunch when you bite into them. And then right next to them on the table, do you see those two nuts? I think those are two chestnuts. Chestnuts are yummy to eat also. They have that nice nutty flavor. You can roast chestnuts and that has a really delicious flavor too. Ooh, looking at this painting makes me really hungry. I like looking at it and imagining what everything would taste like. Ooh, I really like looking at that artwork, did you? I haven't seen some of those in the museum before. That's pretty fun. So now that we're all warmed up, we've thought about all of our different senses. Remember our old friend, Mr. Steve? He's gonna perform some music that has to do with the senses. So let's sing along with him. Hi, Mr. Steve. Oh, hello. Welcome back to Plenty with Art. Oh, you get to watch me from your house today. Let me watch you for a second. Oh, I can see you're all a little bit bigger. Some new friends I see in there today. I can't wait until we're back at the museum, but in the meantime, Welcome to my kitchen. I was just going to fry up five little hot dogs frying in this pan. Let's count how many I have again. One, two, three, four, five. I love hot dogs. They remind me of all my senses because I can smell them cooking where they smell delicious. I can hear them frying in the pan. I can see that they're turning a golden brown and I can feel if they're too hot, don't eat it yet. Let's wait till they cool off. And then finally, when they're all ready, um, num, 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 I can taste them. So let's do a song about five little hot dogs frying in the pan. Let's count how many fingers we have on one hand. These are our little hot dogs. Don't bite them. One, two, three, four, five little hot dogs frying in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One, two, three, four little hot dogs frying in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One, two, 
three little hot dogs frying in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One, two little hot dogs frying in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Only one little hot dog frying in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. No little hot dogs frying in the pan. The pan got hot and the pan went BAM! <laughs> okay, hey, speaking of senses, I'm gonna do another song about senses that you can sing along with. Come along with me. I have got a great song on my ukulele about our senses. It's about my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my fingers or all my skin to touch, my nose to smell, and hmm, what does my tongue do? Uh, taste. So let's give that a try. It's called With My Eyes. Here we go. With my eyes, 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 I can see a yellow duck. With my eyes, 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 I can see a yellow duck. With my ears, 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 I can hear him quacking. With my ears, 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 I can hear him quacking. With my hands, 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 I can feel his wet feathers. Ooh, with my hands, 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 I can feel his wet feathers. Ooh, you're very wet. Were you in the pond? Swimming around? Okay, wait a minute. With my nose, 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 I can smell some popcorn. With my nose, 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 I can smell some popcorn. Hey, with my mouth, 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 I will taste some popcorn. Oh, I can't wait. With my mouth, 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 I will taste some popcorn. Let's give this a try here. Hmm. Can I have this piece? Hmm. Delicious! Oh, you make good popcorn, little duck. Thank you very much for sharing. Mm. I'm full now. I'm going to save the rest for later. These are all the materials you can use to make your sensory shaker, but it's okay if you don't have all of these. Let's take a closer look at what we have. So first you need a container to hold all of your stuff that's going to make lots of noise. So I collected some stuff here. You can get plastic bottles. I have some really big ones, or you can have smaller ones. You can use cups. I have some paper cups. I also have these cool cone-shaped cups. Um, I have some bottles. These are glass, so you should be careful with these if you use glass. If you don't have the lid, that's okay. We're, we can make our own lid using materials like this, the uh, aluminum foil or the plastic wrap. I also have the can. This is from some Spam. I make Spam fried rice with that. You can also use boxes. So if you have little boxes like this takeout box or this cardboard box, you can use that. I even have little tiny plastic cups. You can use those. I have like a takeout container. It's basically anything that can hold stuff together, even if it doesn't have a lid. So that's the first thing we need. Next thing is to make sounds inside. So think about what kinds of things you can put inside of your container that'll make sound. I have some examples here, but you might have other stuff at your house. I looked in my kitchen and I found some uncooked lentils and rice. So those can work. You can shake those up. You can use things like these are little safety pins or if you have paper clips, some little rocks. If you have like a fish tank or you might use these in your garden or you might have some little rocks outside. These are decorative rocks that are made of plastic. Those work too. I have some coins, some pennies, some wooden beads, any kind of beads work. These are just little crumpled up pieces of aluminum foil. Can you hear that? That makes a little noise too. I have a couple popsicle sticks. When you shake those together, they make a good sound. And then I even have some bottle caps, so you can try shaking those, and they'll make a sound too. So anything that is small enough to fit inside your container and that's hard enough to make some kind of sound, and we can explore what sorts of sounds different objects and different containers make together. And then the last thing you need is stuff to decorate. So I have some permanent markers here that I can draw on the outside. I got some stickers. I have different colorful tape. I have big tape, and I have little washi tape. I also just got some clear packing tape in case I need to hold things together. You can also tie stuff around the outside like ribbon. I have yarn. Um, I have some glitter glue pens that can be used to decorate. And then remember we talked about one of the senses that 
you can't really see on video, is smelling. So if you'd like to, you can get a cotton ball like one of these and find something that makes a scent. You should get a grown-up's help with this. So I have some vanilla extract. If you have things like essential oils or maybe just a tiny bit of perfume or cologne or something like that, we can use that to make a scent. And then adults, if you're gonna do this part, I'll show you how you can use something like a push pin or a little nail to poke some holes so that you can smell what's inside. I have a couple other examples of things here. This is two plastic cups taped together and there's sequins inside. So it's really sparkly and shiny when I shake it. This is a soda bottle with some beads. I had a couple of dice that I put in this takeout container. That's really loud. And then this with some beads inside of these two cups taped together. So really anything you can find around the house um, can work for the inside. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. I have some paper. I have colorful paper and I have this cool sparkly paper. Those can actually work inside. You can cut or rip them up into little pieces to put into your container. And you can, oh, hi, Reg. You can also cut them out to decorate the outside. You can see I cut some little colorful squares to cut to decorate the outside of this container. So take a moment now if you haven't already and just collect whatever you can find. That'll be a container, something to put inside that'll make noise, and some fun stuff to put on the outside to decorate. I'm going to start with this plastic container. It's like a takeout container that's nice and clean. So it has this part that you can put things inside, and then there's a nice lid that'll be secure on top. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put together some of the things that I collected. You could put all of the same stuff into your container, or you can try mixing stuff. I like to try just doing a few things at a time to see how it sounds. I'm gonna put in three coins, and this is a plastic container. Let's hear how it sounds. Ooh, that's really loud. I might wanna add a little something else just to see how the mix goes. Here's my rice. I'm gonna just pour in a little bit of the rice. Ooh, that's already making a nice sound. Let's listen to those together. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll just add, I'll try a couple of my aluminum foil balls. So these are just little pieces of aluminum foil that I crumpled up. Let's drop a couple of those in there. Okay, let's see. Ooh, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna close this up. So this has a lid, and I'll show you later a couple other ways you can make this too with different containers, but here's our one. Let's listen to it one more time. <gasps> That's nice. Okay, now we get to decorate it. So, hmm, I'm gonna use my markers first, and you can decorate, I'm gonna do a squiggly line with my purple marker. Squiggly, wiggly, yeah, squiggly line. And I'm going to use purple with blue marker. And I'm going to draw stars all around. Ooh, it's fun to draw stars, isn't it? Ooh, nice. And then I have my stickers. Let's pick out a couple stickers. Hmm. Ooh, I like this rainbow sticker. I'm going to pick one of those. I'm going to put a rainbow sticker right there. How about one more sticker? Ooh, this is a nice cute little strawberry. Here's my strawberry. I'm gonna put it on the other side here. And how about some ribbons? Okay, so I have purple wiggly line. I have blue stars. Maybe I'll add a red ribbon. This is a nice long piece. I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple times. This is a really long piece, so I can really wrap it. And you can get a grown to help you with the tying part. I'm just gonna tie a little knot here. So you can see I tied a knot. Now I have my ribbon. I have my stickers that I can see. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. How about my tape? I have this, ooh, I have this shiny gold. I mean, this isn't gold, shiny green tape. I'm gonna cut off a piece here are my handy scissors. I'm gonna put that across the top. Don't forget the top. And let's give it one more shake. Nice! All right, I'm gonna set that one aside. Let's try another one with a different container. So let's try one, let's say you want to have one that doesn't have a lid. Like I have this nice glass jar, but there's no lid. So I need to make something on top after I fill it up with some cool stuff. So let's see, 
Ooh, I have these nice little bead necklaces. I'm gonna drop this red one in. Ooh, that's already making a nice sound. Let's listen. That's a nice sound. It kind of reminds me of bells. And I'm also going to put in some of my rocks. Let's drop, I'm going to drop five of my rocks in there. Let's listen to that. That's a little louder. Do you hear how, because the rocks are more hard and the glass is kind of hard? So when they hit together, it makes a loud sound. Hmm, I'm going to drop in a couple of my safety pins. These are metal. So they're pretty hard too. I'm gonna see if they change the sound at all. Let's try it. Oh yeah, I really like that. Cool. Okay, I think this is good. And look, it looks nice too. Since it's clear, I can look inside and I can see all the different stuff. So I'm gonna make a little lid for this. I'll use some of my aluminum foil. So I'll just rip off a piece and I'll fold it in half because it's bigger than it needs to be. And I'll just put it over the top. And with aluminum foil, you can just pinch it really tight. If you want to put a rubber band around it, that'll make it more secure. We can even use our decorations to make it secure. Why don't we tie some ribbon around it? Ooh, or how about this yarn? I have this nice blue yarn. I'm gonna cut a piece. And I'm gonna wrap it nice and tight a couple times. And then that'll be part of my decoration. And it'll keep it nice and secure so the aluminum foil doesn't fall off. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, so before we heard the sound of the, the necklace, the rocks, and the safety pins hitting the glass, what happens when they hit the aluminum foil? Let's listen. Do you hear that? It makes a different sound when it hits the top. And actually, it even kind of makes little bumps from the inside. I don't know if you can see that. But they're kind of bumping against the aluminum foil. So I'll have to be careful not to shake this one too hard because I don't want the aluminum foil to get ripped or broken. Okay, what else should I decorate this with? Hmm. Okay, so one thing I have, and you might have something like this at home, these are called glue dots. So this is a little, you can kind of see there's like a clear little blob in the middle and there's a clear piece of plastic on top and then a backing paper, it's kind of like a sticker. And this can help you glue stuff. If you don't have glue dots, you can just use regular tape, like clear tape or scotch tape, or you can use white glue. Or if you have an adult to help you, you can use hot glue. You can use a hot glue gun. So the way you use these, I'm gonna peel off the white back like this. And now I have this little sticky glob on here. Then I'm gonna choose a spot on my jar. That looks good. I'm gonna press it down so it sticks to the jar. And then I'll just carefully peel this off. And see, now I have this little sticky lump. And remember that cool sparkly paper I had? If you're in the Milwaukee area, I actually got this at American Science and Surplus, which is a really fun store. They have these sheets. I'm just gonna cut out, I just cut the corner off of this. I made a little sparkly triangle. And then I'm gonna find my glue dot and I'm gonna stick that right on there. What do you think? Ooh. Now it's shiny from the aluminum foil and for my triangle and let's see I'm gonna put some Ooh, how about this rainbow tape let's see this is duct tape a lot of duct tape now comes in like different colors and designs so you can try some of this if you have some I'm just gonna put a little piece you can tear this with your fingers or use your scissors this is a nice rainbow rectangle pattern I'm gonna Put that on my jar here, like that. And then I wonder if I can draw over the tape I just put down. I'll use this dark blue marker again, and I'm gonna draw a heart. Ooh, you see that? I drew a heart on my rainbow tape. And maybe I'll draw on my glass too. I'm gonna draw, I need a swirly whirly kind of symbol. And I'll use the orange. Maybe I'll draw a smiley face on the top. What do you think? Let's hear it one more time. All right. Okay. I'm going to show you now how to add that smelling element. So you remember I mentioned if you have them, you can use some cotton balls. And this is vanilla extract. This is something you'd use for baking, like for making cookies and stuff like that. 
Um, you know, like I said, if you have essential oils or if uh, someone in your household uses perfume or cologne, ask them for help because you just need a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So I'm just gonna tilt this onto my cotton ball. And again, you're gonna want an adult to help you with this. You just need a little bit. Vanilla extract has this brown color, so you can see it there. Mm, it smells really sweet. I remember when I was little and I thought it smelled so good, I thought vanilla extract would taste good too. And I tried to taste it, it didn't taste good. Mm. Okay, so if you have your sensory shaker already, so I'm gonna open this one back up, for example. Or if it's a bottle, you can unscrew the cap. Or if you want to do this with one of these that didn't have a top, you'll just want to take the top off or do this before. And all you do is drop it in. And then close it back up. And then parents, I'm going to show you, this is a part that an adult should do. This is all sealed up, right? So I can't really smell it. So I'm just going to add some little tiny holes. So parents, for this part, you can use just a thumbtack or a nail, anything that has a nice sharp point, again, you're gonna to wanna to do this part. So I'll show that to you in one second. Just grab something nice and pointy. Okay, adults, so this is the part you're gonna do. So you can grab, I have a little thumbtack here or a metal nail, either of those will work. And remember, I have my scented cotton ball. And now I'm just gonna gently push into the sides and make little holes and you know, of course, you don't want the hole to be the same size as any of the stuff inside. This one has my rice in it, so I want really tiny holes. And you can see with the thumbtack, I can just push it in. Same thing with the nail. Just be careful that you don't like press it too hard so that the plastic is bent too much. So just a couple holes. Okay, and I'm gonna shake it up. And then when your child leans into the holes, and smells. Ooh, I can smell that vanilla extract smell. And you can put more holes. You might want to put them on the top or the bottom too. Um, but yeah, put a couple of those in there. If you're using a container like the glass container, of course, we can't put holes in that. So really easy to put holes in the top. If you use something like aluminum foil or the plastic wrap, so that'll work too. And that, this part's optional. If you don't want to add the scent, element of it that's okay too you can just have the sight and the sound and the touching and you can talk about tasting and uh, smelling okay so now that we have our shakers hopefully you've put some materials together too, made your own and we can shake them we can hear all the different sounds sound really different and this one I can smell too mmm smells sweet now that you hopefully have a shaker mr. Steve's gonna come back and you can shake along with him he has some really fun songs ready okay mr. Steve oh hello I guess I was hungrier than I thought popcorn I love popcorn I have a song about popcorn that you can use a shaker for did you make a shaker yet? If you didn't, give it a try. This is my shaker, it's called a maraca. So, song about popcorn goes like this. Pop, 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 put the popcorn in the pot. Pop, 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 shake it till it's hot. Pop, 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 lift the lid and what have you got? Popcorn! Let's try it again. See if you can do it with me. Get your shaker ready. Pop, 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 put the popcorn in the pot. Pop, 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 shake it till it's hot. Pop, 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 lift the lid, and what have you got? Popcorn! Get your shaker. If you don't have a shaker, use your hands. Just shake your hands. It's a real fun song. It goes like this. Shake your shaker up. Shake your shaker down. Shake your shaker round and round. Make it dance around the town. Shake it on your knee. Shake it on your toe. Shake your shaker fast. And shake your shaker.
super slow. Shake it on your shoulders. Shake it on your head. Ouch! Put it in both hands and put it right to bed. Okay, let's try it again. Try to sing with me. Shake your shaker up. Shake your shaker down. Shake your shaker round and round. Make a dance around the town. Shake it on your knee. Not too hard. <laughs> Shake it on your toe. Shake your shaker fast. And shake your shaker slow. Shake it on your shoulders and shake it on your head. Ouch! Put your shaker in both hands and put it right to bed. Here's a song you can use with your shakers or without your shakers, but you gotta get up and move. It's called Shake My Sillies Out, and I've got a little friend to help me. Oh, baby penguin! There you are. You ready to dance? Okay, let's shake your sillies out. Here we go. I'm going to shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Wiggle all my legs out of the way. I'm going to jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Wiggle all my legs out of the way. I'm going to clap, clap, clap my cookies out. Clap, clap, clap my cookies out. Clap, clap, clap my cookies out. Wiggle all my legs out of the way. I'm going to yawn, 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 my sleepies out. <sighs> yawn, 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 my sleepies out. Yawn, 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 my sleepies out. Wiggle, my wag is away. I'm going to get ready to shake, get your shaker. I'm going to shake, shake, shake my sailing dog. Shake, shake, shake my sailing dog. Shake, shake, shake my sailing dog. Wiggle, my wag is away. Okay, thanks. Nice job, Penguin. Bye-bye. Oh, hi. That was fun, right? Oh, man. I love shaking along with Mr. Steve. That was so fun. Well, I'm sorry to say, but that brings us to the end of Play Day. I'm so happy you could join us today. And we'll be back here every month through May of 2021. Our next meeting will be October 9th. That's another Friday. Same time, same place, starting at 10 o'clock here on Milwaukee Art Museum's Facebook. So we'll see you then. We're gonna be doing another project. We'll have some more music. It's gonna be really fun. So I'll see you then. Bye.